All right, guys, welcome back to Schmatz Outdoors. This is going to be the second installment on uh, doing a coyote from start to finish. Uh, if you missed it already, go back to the first video. I showed how to remove burrs from the animals without uh, tearing out the actual fur, you know, but actually getting all the burrs out of them and doing final, the final combing, kind of getting them ready to sell or ready to skin, sorry, finally getting them ready to skin. Uh, this video is going to be skinning of the coyote. It's going to be a fairly long video. I'm going to try and go as detailed as I can into what I'm doing as I go through it. Uh, we're going to try and probably film a couple different angles for you guys to make sure I get so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, so he's already combed. He's got all the burrs out of him already. The next step, like I said, is skinning of him. So we're going to get right into it. So tools of the trade we got I use a fillet knife to skin everything um, I've been using it for years I do have a ceramic stone so I will about every two animals I'll sharpen my knife it's already sharp so I'm not gonna worry about that I have a hook knife I use a hook knife to open up all my animals so it's a utility knife and it's like a shingle knife or shingle blade I believe is what they really are for uh, trimming shingles off when you're doing like the valley of a house. So I use a hook knife to, to do all the opening cuts on all my animals. It works really nice and since it's got kind of a blunt edge on there, you know, it kind of stops it from cutting in too deep most of the time. Uh, so it works out very well. The other things I'm gonna need for skinning, I have a tail stripper and a tail knife or a tail splitter and a tail stripper. So this is a homemade tail stripper. Um, it's made of aluminum, it's like eight inches long, inch and a half wide, half inch thick. The holes are three quarter, half, uh, three eighths, quarter, and then three sixteenths. So depending on the animal I'm skinning, you know, I'll just switch to a different hole on there. Uh, it opens up so you can get around your tail. You can buy something similar to this now. When I built this, you could not. Um, and then you got a tail splitting knife. So we're gonna use that. And the last thing I have is a game rail. So I got two different styles here. You got your traditional game rail. Um, what you end up doing is you kind of hook this between like the tendon and the leg and the bone. Um, I actually prefer an actual uh, choke collar chain style game rail. Um, it, I like the flexibleness of this, be able to go back and forth. And I also don't have to be quite as cautious when I'm opening them up to cut that tendon. Cause if you cut that tendon, you cannot use this guy. I mean, you end up like poking it into the muscle and I can't pull, or I feel like I can't pull as hard on this style of a Gambriel as I can on this guy. Cause the harder I pull, the tighter that cinches down on his leg. So I, I prefer a chain game rail, and I also like the fact that, you know, it kind of gives you a little bit of uh, flexibility in the width, right? So, you know, it will flex in and out and kind of move around with the animal. So, like, if I need to pull my legs apart a little bit to help with skinning, if I pull on that, it just swings out to the side a little bit. So, again, I'm going to be using a chain game rail. If you have this style, go ahead and use it it will work I, I skinned plenty of animals with it back in the day but like i said i prefer a chain style one and like you said this one here i mean i pulled hard enough i've actually bent it over the years um all right we're gonna get you mounted here so we're gonna go through all the opening cuts i can do in the house here and then we're going to go outside and i'm gonna hook you up to uh my actual skinning pulley the pulley setup I have for skinning. I do have a skinning machine, but I'm not gonna be using it in this video because I feel like most of the people that are gonna probably be watching this video will not have an actual skinning machine to use. So I'm actually gonna skin this coyote by hand, you know, the way you would do if you didn't have a skinning machine. All right, so we're gonna start right by with the legs here. We're gonna do uh, what I'm going to do for cuts, I'm going to go all the way around the entire leg and then I'm going to cut down the color change so you can kind of see where they got white like on the inside of the leg and you got kind of the 
Well, on this coyote, he's a little bit red or tan color, and I'm gonna basically cut right up the back of the wig, and then right up to, right here's the vent. So we're gonna go just on this side of the vent to about the middle of the tail, just behind the vent, down, right down the back of his leg to here, and then we'll do the second side. So with the hook knife, what I typically do is I kind of go underneath the leg, hook it, and then pull around, and I'm kind of pushing into the bone. So you can see, I hope you guys can see, so it cut most of the way around. Then we'll hook on this side, and we'll pull it out. And again, I, I am being careful not to cut the tendon. So right here is the tendon, this is the bone. So I am being careful not to cut that tendon. Grab my knife that fell on the floor here. So okay, so I got basically the whole top of it, everything I could see. I'm gonna kind of fish my knife by wiggling it back and forth, just below that tendon and just below the bone and poke it out the other side, turn my knife straight down and cut. So now I have that wig ringed all the way around the wig. Uh, and where I'm cutting that, like this wig, you could see a little easier. So I had him hanging, so that's why this wig is stretched out. I hang him by one leg upside down, and that all the guts, you know, move up in the body. Then it kind of keeps him from tainting. Uh, so this leg here, you can kind of see I'm going just above. I don't know. It probably is the ankle because you would have like the knee up here. Here be the ankle. So I'm going just above the ankle. Again, I'm going. And what I typically do is I try to pull the fur around the legs as far as I can and then hook my knife in there. And again, I'm kind of pushing towards the actual bone in the leg. Let's see, let me cut most of it. I'm just making sure it cut and then we're gonna go on the top here and cut until I get back to about that tendon. And then we're gonna slide my knife there we go it just didn't cut a little right on the front of that wig so again we're gonna go right here's the tendon right here's the tendon I'm trying to look for here's the wig bone so I'm gonna kind of poke it under that tendon and poke it all the way out the other side turn the knife away from me and cut down okay so now I got both legs ringed all the way around now we're gonna take the top leg here. I'm gonna pull it up and stretch it out. And now I'm gonna hook kind of right by that tendon, hook the fur. Didn't wanna go. All right, and we're gonna pull my knife right down that kind of right at the back of the leg, right on that color change until I get to about the hip bone. Then it usually my knife will kind of pop out Okay, so if I get this guy opened up, you can see that it opened him all the way up, all the way up to that leg. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife, the last little bit, it didn't quite open as good. I'm gonna poke my knife in right at where it ended there. So you can see right where it ended. I'm gonna poke my knife in there, kind of angling it towards the body. So I'm going kind of around the hip, you can feel the bone. And here's the vent. So I want my knife to basically poke, come out right next to that vent. So I'm gonna poke it in there and then just kind of pull it out towards me. And you can see it cut right next to that vent. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch that fur on the top of my cut. I'm pinching and pulling up and I'm cutting kind of towards the animal. And I wanna like get that partially started around the top of his hip and then up the leg just a little bit. So when I try to skin him, that's gonna help me pull a little bit easier when I get it. You can see how much I got kind of started. And then I'm actually gonna go on like the inside of his leg and just make a couple cuts just to get that uh, first started. And that's gonna help me make sure it skins a little easier. And now I want to go all the way up to his leg and I'm just kind of following my cut. It didn't open up all the way right to his ankle. So I'm going to stick my knife in there and finish that all the way open. So you can see that it's split all the way up his leg. Now I want to go around his leg here and get the top.
top part of this started going. Okay, so we got one side. And again, I'm trying not to cut that tendon. All right, so I got like two inches or a little more all the way around that leg, skin part way down. And I got him opened up all the way to his tail on this side. We're gonna flip him over. Make sure he doesn't fall off my table. It's a, I find it a lot easier to do this opening cut with the leg on the top. You could do it while it was on the bottom. It's just gonna be a little tougher to actually get him opened up like that. So we're gonna grab my hook knife again. Gonna hook it right by the tendon and just pull it right down that color change line, right down the back of his leg. My knife hit the hip bone and it kind of popped out, which is what it does every time. And what I just did there is I have a trash pail and I just take that little bit of fur and throw it in that trash pail. Okay, so now we're gonna go find my cut here. Right there's the end of the cut where it quit cutting. We're gonna poke my knife in. And I'm gonna run it right down by the back of the tail. And once I get it right to the tail, we just tip my knife and it'll cut right out. Now we're gonna kind of pinch that fur. We're just gonna kind of open him up here a little bit. Just get, like I said, all I'm doing is just trying to get kind of the edge of that fur started pulling off. If you don't do this, you're gonna have a heck of a time getting, or I have a heck of a time anyway, getting the, the legs skinned down. So I got the, uh, basically around the hip and part way up the leg. So now I'm gonna do the inside of the leg here just a little bit. Just so when I kind of, when I start skinning that that part of it will want to skin a little bit easier. Now I'm going to go up here. Again, it did, didn't quite cut all the way to the, so I just open that up all the way and we'll skin the top couple legs. So I'm just kind of getting it started here, going around. So you can see there's just a little bit of a membrane there left, so we're gonna kind of get him. All right, so now I got two inches up on this side, two inches up on that leg. I got him basically split down to each side of his vent down here. We're ready to hang him up, so we're gonna take my chain game reel here. So the way these things work, if you take the, the ring on it, you hold it sideways, and you just drop the chain down through the ring. And what that does is it creates a nice little loop right there. So I'm just going to take that. And we're going to slide it on his foot. And pull it tight. And that's going to hold nice and tight on there. So we're going to grab the other side here. Hold the ring. Drop the chain down through it. Makes a nice little loop. We'll thread this foot on up to that ankle or up to his knee ascent or yeah his ankle all right that guy there is all on he's ready ready to go outside and get skin so we're gonna get some heavier clothes on because it's cold outside today and we're gonna go get set up outside and we'll get this guy skin right away here all right guys so i got coyote hanging up here um Basically, I just have it. This is like a deer with hoist or whatever. I have an eye bolt up in my garage up there just to hold that up. And then, like I said, I just snap my game rail into that guy so I can pull this guy up as I go. And then what I have is just a nail on the inside here that I hook my rope on to keep my rope out of my way. So we're going to have a couple angles. I got a phone over here. I got a camera here filming. So hopefully I can do this and we can see kind of what's going on. Uh, I think I'm going to mount you on my forehead up here. I'm going to mount you up here instead of my chest so you guys can kind of see uh, a little bit better hopefully what I'm actually doing because you're going to be, I try to work at like shoulder height, you know, up here. I don't want to be bent way over working down or skinning way up here. I want to be working kind of at normal height. You know, I will pull down and then I'll hoist my animal up a little higher. So. Like I said, we're going to get you hooked up on my forehead. I got these two recording already, so we're going to get right into skinning this guy. All right, here we go. So what we got, I got my truck backed up here just because normally I have my skinning table setting like where this air compressor is. 
but I have my skin tail in the basement obviously because it's cold out here so I'm going to use the tailgate of my truck so I got my uh, tail stripper and my tail cutter or uh, splitter right here I got my uh, uh, fillet knife so basically when I'm pulling this guy is going to be setting over here on my tailgate but when I need it it's going to be close enough so I can reach it all right so we got this guy uh, hanging here I already started pre-started the legs you could see that the Gambrielle was holding up against like where the ankle would be so by me doing pre-cuts here um, you know it kind of opens it up nicely to get it started the only thing I'm going to do before I get going is I'm going to take my knife here and I'm going to go right on right by the vent here and we're going to poke my knife through and I'm going to run it just underneath the back of the vent here and then I'm going to cut out. So I want to get both of these two cuts you know, that are open in both legs, I want to get them to meet in the middle. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm just going to go right at the end of the cut on this side and I'm just going to kind of poke my knife through and poke it out the other side so you can see it out and then I'm just going to kind of slowly cut up and out at me. So now you could see I got cut all the way on both sides of the vent there. So now when I uh, go to pull my legs, it'll actually pull a little bit farther around the back. We're ready to start skinning, I like doing the actual skinning of him. So we're going to grab on, we're going to kind of turn the animal towards me. I actually try to grab both the inside and the back of the leg here. And we're going to grab and we're going to kind of pull down. Okay, until I get about so far. And what there is, there's a little gland I think this is right in the back of the leg. Typically there's a little tendon there that doesn't want to pull. So we'll grab that guy and peel it off. Break that. And then you can kind of see the inside of my leg is pulling tight right to the, this stuff. So then I'll take my knife here and I'll just pull on that just a little. And I'm just, that's part of what I'm just trying to get moving. Now I spin them around and I'll grab the inside of the leg and pull. You almost have to make sure, and then again, there's another little tendon there. You can either just cut that or pull it and snap it off. But in order to get the leg to skin, so what I just did is I just grabbed like that and I pushed down. Now we're gonna pull on the outside. So I'm, I just hold the animal so he doesn't swing around. We're gonna grab the pelt and just kind of grab it like this and we're gonna kind of push down and twist my hand down. So we're gonna grab and push my hand down. And there you go, see it stripped the whole leg. So I re-grabbed it a little closer to the butt and pushed down. So by getting that cut around the vent there, it allows me, basically I'm right to the middle of the coyote there. We're just gonna grab the inside and push one more time just to make sure I got the whole inside of the leg skinned. So I'm basically to the middle on both sides. We're gonna grab this side. Basically grabbing both edges of it, pulling down. Again, right here I'm caught a little bit. So we're just gonna, and you gotta be real careful cutting because coyote skin is super thin and you will slice right through it if you're uh, too aggressive. So I'm just cutting a few of those tendons and then just opening up the back just a little right here to allow me to pull the inside of that leg down. So I'm gonna grab the leg and I'm just gonna pull at me here. So the inside of the leg's pretty much done. We're gonna grab towards Kind of in the middle of the leg here, we're gonna grab. And like I said, I'm gonna kind of roll my hand down and push down at the same time. We're gonna grab closer to the butt, do it again. So like I said, now I'm basically, I could touch, my fingers are touching underneath that tail right now. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna actually split my tail down probably an inch and a half here. In order to do that, I'm gonna grab around it and I'm gonna kinda of pinch down and pull together. So reach around and I'm kinda of separating the fur and pulling down. You can see how that pulled that nice and tight and it pulled both the hair both ways. So essentially I just pinched and I'm pinching all the fur on the back side of the leg right there, or back side of the tail. And then we go right down the middle of the tail and just slice. This is where having a sharp, sharp knife helps. You can see how it just split that wide open now we're going to grab one side and we're going to kind of cut right next to the tailbone and kind of work my way around. And then we're going to grab the opposite side and work my way around. Okay, 
So now you can see I got my finger, so I'm both through. I'm gonna set my knife down. We're gonna grab both sides of the tail, uh, or grab the hide on both sides of the tail and pull down. So I just skin part of that back. And then we're gonna kind of grab it like this, grabbing part of the tail, and we're gonna kind of pull down it at me. And what that just did is it just skinned the tail all the way down to where I had stopped splitting it. We're gonna take our knife and we're gonna go right at the edge of that hide and the uh, tail there, and we're gonna to cut towards the tail, but we're gonna go all the way around and just kind of cut that little membrane all the way around where that tail, where the hide was connected to the tail. Tail stripper. The way that mine works, you just slip it over and you pinch it down on the hole that fits. Uh, raccoons typically the biggest hole. Uh, coyotes like this, I'll typically use the next smaller hole. It just kind of depends on the size of the tail. I should be able to get by with the second size. It's a half inch diameter hole. So we're gonna slip it on there, pinch it together and push down on there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push down with both hands. So that's why I like my own because it's built a little heavier. I'm gonna push down and rock just a little bit. And that kind of helps get it sliding. So I'm pushing down and just rocking just a little. And there we go, it just pulled. And then I just grabbed the tailbone and pulled the last little bit. Tail stripper's done. Now we'll get my tail knife out. So what I like to do is I like to grab the tail and try and grab it. So I'm grabbing the, obviously the bottom of the tail is facing up at us now. I'll kind of fluff it just a little just to make sure I'm holding it straight. Hook my knife in there and then just kind of pull down and down fairly quick and make one quick cut. And it goes, it'll usually cut a little hair. If you go slow, it typically will cut, 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 and then it kind of balls up and catches. This way it literally split it right to the very end of the tail. And sometimes if you don't go fast enough, this part of it will hit the end of the tail and it will stop cutting and it won't cut that last half inch of tail open. All right, we're gonna, right in the back here, there's a little bit of membrane, so we're gonna cut that. There's a real fatty coyote. All right, on the belly side, we're gonna kind of make sure we pull both sides all the way to the middle. So this is a male coyote, so there's a penis bone in there. And what I just cutting there, I'm cutting kind of some of the membrane that's holding the hide to the inside of the leg there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all this fur together and I'm gonna kind of pinch it in the inside until I pinch it on the penis bone because I actually wanna cut between the penis bone and the hide. There's kind of a little bit of membrane there. And once I get it in there, then I'm gonna cut up out the top. So there's quite a bit of fat here. So we're gonna cut until I find the penis bone in there. So right there's a penis bone. So right here's the penis bone. So I'm just gonna go right in front of that and we're gonna poke it out the other side, my knife out the other side there. So you guys could see that. And then we're just gonna kind of cut straight up and out the top. So basically like, uh, you weave a little strip between the vent in the bottom and the crotch of the inside of the leg. All right, so right here's our penis bone. So we're gonna kind of cut on either side of that until we get down to where the hole is coming out the pelt. And again, this guy is fatty and he's cold, so the fat is stiff here. Okay, and you kind of go back and forth. Okay, so right there I got to the end of it, and then I just cut the little bit of skin going between the penis hole and the actual penis itself, you cut that off. So now I'm gonna go around this guy and kinda go just above where the pelt is attached. We're gonna get him kinda pulling down here. Like I said, this is a really, really fat coyote. You know, a lot of fat in there. He's not terribly big, cause he's a pup, but so all I'm doing is just kind of spinning it around and cutting that membrane right where the hide is attached to the skin. So I got him so he looks pretty good all the way around here. I'm going to uh, hoist him up just a little bit. So just grab this and pull him up. Okay, hook my rope up over there. All right, so we're back to this guy. We're gonna start on the belly side. We're gonna grab the belly I'm gonna grab the fur and I'm gonna kind of roll my hands like that and push down. So we're gonna grab and kind of roll them up 
and push down. So I just got, I don't know, probably six inches, eight inches of that belly skin right there. And then I'm gonna kind of make sure the hide is rolled inside out. I'm gonna grab right at the base of the tail here, grab one hand around the tail, one hand just above the tail, and I'm gonna bend down and I'm gonna lean into it as hard as I can. The head camera probably ain't gonna be able to see what I'm doing, so I'm hoping these two cameras will get it. So we're gonna grab and kind of roll them up and push down. So I just got, I don't know, probably six inches, eight inches of that belly skin right there. And then I'm gonna kind of make sure the hide is rolled inside out. I'm gonna grab right at the base of the tail here, grab one hand around the tail, one hand just above the tail, and I'm gonna bend down and I'm gonna lean into it as hard as I can. The head camera probably ain't gonna be able to see what I'm doing, so I'm hoping these two cameras will get it. But I'm gonna lean forward and then just kind of lean into it and pull them down. Okay, now we're gonna kind of get the belly. We're gonna kind of roll the fur up again and then kind of push down. So I'm actually kind of holding my hand like that and then pushing down. So some guys will end up cutting the front of that chest. I typically don't ever have to cut that. I just keep pushing until I get it pushed down over the top of that. All right, we're gonna pull again on the back. We're gonna grab the back, grab this, and we're gonna lean it. So you can kind of see, I'm holding my arm basically right up against that pelt and then literally just weaning my body weight as much as I can over onto that arm, pushing basically straight down and then you can bounce just a little and that will help keep it pulling. So I'm basically right to the back of the front shoulders here. Um, we're gonna pull it up because I gotta get the belly a little bit farther here. So again, I'm just holding all that loose fur from up here in my hand, and then I'm gonna roll my hand down like that on one side, and on the other, back on the first side. See, so I didn't have to cut any on that chest because I feel like you cut, you got a chance of cutting holes. Okay, we're gonna pull a little bit more on the back here. Again, I'm pinching the tail holding just above it, kind of grabbing all that fur with this hand, and then we're just gonna lean on it. We're gonna pull a little bit more on the back here. Again, I'm pinching the tail, holding just above it, kind of grabbing all that fur with this hand, and then we're just gonna lean on it. Okay, it just pulled me past the front leg, so we're gonna hoist him up. It just pulled me past the front leg, so we're gonna hoist him up a little, because I don't want to be bent over. So I'm up as high as my hoist can go, which is fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hand and go, I'm all the way up on the inside of the pelt, right to inside the legs. And I'm gonna, I'm pinching the pelt and I'm pulling down with this hand that's inside there. And then I'm gonna take this hand, kind of go flat right up against the skin. And I'm just kind of driving it down in there to kind of pull some of that hide inside of there. And I'm gonna switch hands and push on the opposite side. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get so I can get from the back of the leg on this side, I got to get this pulled down a little bit more and I'll probably have to cut a little here so I can get behind the leg so I can get my front legs pulled out. But I just use my hand and go flat down in there to get basically I'm skinned all the way right to basically the back on this side. So I'm going to take my knife, like I said, and we're going to Grab and pull down a little bit here. You gotta be a little careful on the legs here. Okay. So I'm cutting towards the animal here too. I'm not cutting, if you cut down at all, you're gonna be cutting a hole in your pelt. So I'm actually like, cut towards the animal and I'm not hardly putting any pressure on my knife. The pressure is me grabbing the pelt here and pulling down on it. That's where the pressure is coming from. So once I get about so far down, I can poke my finger through. So I just poked my fingers through there. So I'm all the way through to the inside. I might have this other side far enough as well. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of rolling my finger like that and pushing it in there. 
All right, so I got it all the way through there. We're gonna pull down just a little bit until I can get my whole hand in there. So you see, I got my whole hand through that guy. I'm literally gonna put my other hand on top of it and I'm literally gonna just sit down and pull. So I just skin basically the whole top of that leg. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Pull down until I can get my hand in there. And I'm literally gonna just sit down. So what that did is that skinned part of the neck here and then it skinned all the way down to basically the front knee. I'm gonna flex the leg back up. So like I said, this he's coyote stiff. So I'm just flexing the leg. See, I got his leg bent straight. Because if I keep pulling like this, the hide is tight. You don't have any slack in order to let it like pull any farther. So by leaving his leg up a little bit, that leaves me, gives me a little slack in the hide. Like this part of the hide isn't pulling on that leg now. So now I can pull the leg a little farther. Grab the leg and I'm gonna go kind of round the leg and cut the little membrane that might be holding me up here. Kind of round the knee there. And then we're gonna grab with this arm. I'm gonna pull up with this arm. I'm gonna go in, right in the crotch of that leg and push down with this arm. Kind of put my weight on it. And I usually skin till I'm about, I don't know, three inches below that knee. You can grab the pelt down here and pull down. And then that tightens this up really nice. Grab my knife again. I'm pinching down, holding this fur tight. We're gonna go inside of there, start as far around as I can reach, push in, push hard actually into my knife, cut all the way around, and then cut the last little bit. And that wig is out. Okay, we'll do the same thing on this side. We're gonna trim some of that little bit of membrane that kind of hold me up here. Right on the back of the knee. Okay. We're gonna grab a blue rag here. All right, so typically coyotes are, are breeders in my opinion. So apparently I cut a little, little artery on the inside of his leg so he started to bleed a little. So I don't mind a little bit of blood on there. I just try to reduce it a little bit. I use just blue shop rag. So again, I just pull up on the knee, pull my pelt tight. That tightened all this up, but it leaves slack on the head or around like the body part of it. We're gonna pull up and push down. So again, I just pull up on the knee, pull my pelt tight. That tightened all this up, but it leaves slack on the head or around like the body part of it. We're gonna pull up and push down. And again, you can see I'm like three inches down. I end up with just a little bit of uh, fat there or skin there. I end up with just a little bit of uh, fat there or skin there. I'm gonna reach around, slice all the way around. And then pull that leg out. Okay, we're just about done here. So we're basically to the head. So we're going to just kind of cut a little this membrane around around the head and then we're going to pull a little bit more again. Okay, and you got to want to kind of watch cutting on the throat because the uh, carotid arteries are very close to the skin right there. If you cut too close, you're going to actually, if you cut one of them open, he's going to bleed all over. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to go just below, like below the front legs, just below where the head is still in there and I'm going to pinch that as tight as I can kind of hold this part up with the other hand. Now I'm gonna lean into it again. I'm gonna pull down. So I'm basically gonna just try and straighten this arm down and then lean my weight into it as much as I can. So what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna go just below, like below the front legs, just below where the head is still in there. And I'm gonna pinch that as tight as I can. Kind of hold this part up with the other hand. Now I'm gonna lean into it again. I'm gonna pull down. So I'm basically gonna just try and straighten this arm down and then lean my weight into it as much as I can. So we're gonna grab it, lean into it, bounce a little if you have to. All right, you can see what that did. That basically skinned the entire head all the way down to the ears. Um, so right here is an ear. Here's the other ear. So this is the back of the head. Um, we're gonna grab our knife here now. 
We're gonna cut just a little right on the edge of that membrane and the skin on one side. And do, do the same on this side. That noise is just my game rail flipping back and forth up here. Okay. We're going to, this is the ear, this is an ear. We're gonna go, I don't know, maybe an inch from where it looks like the ear comes out of the head. And I'm gonna cut and push really hard and slice hard in there and try and cut right through the ear in one swipe. Okay, there you go, second swipe. That ear is cut all the way nice and clean. Some guys will leave more of the ear and then uh, take more of it off when you're fleshing them. I like to weave about that much. That makes it easy to get it off when I'm fleshing. So we're gonna flip over to this side. One clean cut and the second cut and I should be all the way through. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm grabbing into his ear hole here. We're turning my camera here a little bit. We're grabbing in his ear hole and we're gonna kind of cut towards the head here. We're gonna flip over to this ear hole, cut right towards the head. And then grabbing the hide again, just pinching it all the way around and pull down. That kind of moves all the, everything on the bottom of the head here. So we're right to his eyes. So on a coyote, the eyes are directly in front of the ear, maybe two inches in front of that. You can kind of see, you know, like the side of the face and the top of the face. You can kind of see there's like a little divot almost in the actual skull there. So what I do is I stick my fingers up into his ear and just pinch that. And that holds it, it pulls it out right over the eye. So when I'm cutting down over the eye, see how it cut right nice and clean right to the eyeball there. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna cut right down, right over that eye. And then that leaves your eyelid on there so you don't end up cutting such a big hole around your eye. If you didn't do that, you would... Uh... So again, there's a little arteries on the side of the mouth here. I typically end up cutting them open so they start bleeding too. But if you don't kind of pull that open over the eye, it ends up uh, cutting a really big hole. So directly below the eye, you can actually cut down and it's gonna cut into the side of the mouth there. So I have my hand in through the ear hole and then I stick my finger out the edge of the mouth and then I can cut the part of the mouth open. We'll get this side going as well. So open the side of the mouth. You can stick your finger right in the whips in. So I'm cutting a little up by the head and a little on the lower jaw and then we'll just kind of flip back and forth. Again some guys cut will go about as far as I have and they'll literally cut the whole lower jaw off. I typically weave the pelt or they cut the pelt off of the lower jaw right there because you trim it off when you uh, put them on the board. I typically like to weave it on there until I'm done fleshing, because I actually use that lower jaw to hold it while I'm fleshing, you know, like the, the neck. So I'm gonna cut a little on one side, across the bottom, a little on the other side. And I just got my hand through the lips there. And we'll just keep cutting a little on each side. And what I'm doing is I'm actually pulling towards me. You can see the animal's leaning at me. So right now the weight of the animal is doing all the pulling. I'm just using my hand to just kind of turn it back and forth. Okay, and then right down the bottom of the whip, there's the lower whip taken off. Now I'm gonna use my rig here to wipe all the blood off. And we're gonna flip him back over. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick my hand in that lower, in the mouth hole essentially, and pull down and at me here. And we're just gonna kind of work back and forth from one side to the other. One side or the other, back and forth here. Okay. And I'm basically cutting towards this skull, like right there. Hope you can hear that, that's the actual skull. So I'm cutting towards the skull and not towards the pelt, right? So I'm just, and I'm lightly cutting with my knife. I'm not like slicing in, I'm literally just lightly cutting with my knife and letting me pulling down on this actually do the actual cutting. So I'm working my way down the nose. So I'm past like the front of the teeth and all that. So I'm, the nose is about this much longer. So it sticks out about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch past the teeth. 
So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of rocking back and forth, running my knife kind of right on the edge of the cartilage of that nose. And I do, do one side, do the other side, a little on the top. Okay, now I'm right to the end of the nose and I'm gonna stick my finger up in there, up against that nose, and then I'm pinching with my hand and pushing the nose like that to kind of keep the pelt tight. And we're gonna go right down and I'm actually gonna cut kind of down and away from me. Just the way the nose comes off, I'm cutting down and away from me. And there you go, I got no cartilage left on the nose. We're completely done. I typically will take a rag here and wipe a little of the blood off. Stop that guy from moving. We'll turn this guy inside right. For you guys so you can see. And there we go, we got one nice skin coyote completely done there. So this guy is ready to, we're gonna wash him next. That's gonna be the next step of this guy. So again, he's completely done, ready to, ready to actually flesh if you wanted to. He's not terribly dirty. I did get a little blood up here around his head. So when I wash him, that will all come off of there. You know, I got a little bit on his lips just for me grabbing onto him. Uh, using my uh, power skinning machine, I don't get any blood typically on him. So like this coyote, I probably wouldn't wash if I was using my actual skinning machine. But we're gonna do it just so you guys know how I actually do it. I don't have a fancy wash machine or anything like that to do it. So we're gonna, that'll be the next video in this series. Again, this is the second video of the series. This is skinning. The first video was uh, removing the burrs on him. The next video is gonna be washing him. The next video after that will be actually fleshing him. And then we'll have a boarding video uh, at the very end. So again, this is only the second video of probably a five or six video series here. I just appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions or anything like that, please leave them down in the comments. Uh, all of us can kind of learn from each other. So if you have, see something that I could do better that would make my life a little easier, I'm all for that and everybody could use that information. So leave comments down below. I like to hear what you guys think. Um, again, I'm open for constructive criticism. If you see something I'm doing wrong, go ahead and leave it right in the comments there. And I, I'm more than happy to take your information. Like I said, if it will make me a better trapper, it will make everybody a better trapper. So, all right, we'll see you guys on the next video.